subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, welcome to Test Prep Training. Today we will discuss about, designing, and implementing Microsoft DevOps Solutions, AZ400. This exam is intended for the DevOps professionals who have already received the badge of Azure Developer Associate, or Azure Administrator Associate, who should take the exam. Candidates appearing for AZE 400 exam, are DevOps professionals who combine people, processes, and technologies to continuously deliver valuable products, and services that meet end-user needs, and business objectives. Some of the important details listed for candidates planning to take this exam includes First, subject matter expertise working with people, processes, and technologies to continuously deliver business values. Second, ability to design and implementing strategies for collaboration, code, infrastructure, source control, security, compliance, continuous integration, testing, delivery, monitoring, and feedback. Third, familiarity with both Azure administration and development, and must be expert in at least one of these areas. Learning objectives. Microsoft being a dominant player constantly provides relevant and required documentation to meet the needs of all of today's diverse learners, and therefore, helping them to build a life in the world of cloud computing. As a result, the potential aspirants are easily able to locate the required detailed information along with the subtopics included in each domain. The AZE 400 exam focuses on five key areas. First, develop an instrumentation strategy. Second, also, develop a site reliability engineering strategy. Third, develop a security and compliance plan. Fourth, manage source control. Fifth, facilitate communication and collaboration. Sixth, define and implement continuous integration. Seventh, define and implement continuous delivery and release management strategy. Learning path. The AZE 400 exam helps candidates to design and implement strategies for application code and infrastructure that allow for continuous integration, testing, delivery, monitoring, and feedback. The AZE 400 exam tests your knowledge across seven different subject areas, and that's how this learning path is structured. Exam Format The Microsoft Azure AZE 400 exam consists of 40 to 60 questions. All the questions will be multiple choice, or multiple response questions, which need to be finished within a time frame of 150 minutes. Candidate has to score at least 700, or more points in order to pass the exam. The registration fee for the exam is 165 US dollars, including all the additional taxes. Additionally, the exam is available in four languages, namely English, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. Exam Detailed Course Outline First, develop an instrumentation strategy which compromises 5-10% to weightage in this exam. Second, develop a site reliability engineering strategy which compromises 5-10% to weightage in this exam. Third, Develop a security and compliance plan which compromises 10 to 15% weightage in this exam. Fourth, manage source control which compromises 10 to 15% weightage in this exam. Fifth, facilitate communication and collaboration which compromises 10 to 15% weightage in this exam. Sixth, define and implement continuous integration which compromises 20 to 25% weightage in this exam. Seventh, define and implement continuous delivery and release management strategy which compromises 10 to 15% weightage in this exam. Now, we will discuss about exam outline topics in detail. Domain 1, Develop an Instrumentation Strategy Number 1, Design, and Implement Logging It contains five subtopics which are First, Assess, and Configure a Log Framework Second, Design a Log Aggregation, and Storage Strategy, for example Azure Storage Third, design a log aggregation using Azure Monitor. Fourth, manage access control to logs, workspace-centric, or resource-centric. Fifth, integrate crash analytics, app center crashes, crash lytics. Number two, design and implement telemetry. It contains six subtopics which are, first, design and implement distributed tracing. Second, inspect application performance indicators. Third, inspect infrastructure performance indicators. Fourth, define and measure key metrics, CPU, memory, disk, network. Fifth, implement alerts on key metrics, email, SMS, webhooks, Teams, or Slack. Sixth, integrate user analytics, 
for example Application Insights Funnels, Visual Studio App Center, Test Flight, Google Analytics. Number 3, Integrate Logging and Monitoring Solutions. It contains four subtopics which are First, Configure and Integrate Container Monitoring, Azure Monitor, Prometheus, etc. Second, Configure and Integrate with Monitoring Tools, Azure Monitor Application Insights, Dynatrace, New Relic, Nagios, Zabbix. Third, create feedback loop from platform monitoring tools, for example Azure Diagnostics VM extensions, Azure Platform Logs, Event Grid. Fourth, manage access control to the monitoring platform. Domain 2, develop a site reliability engineering strategy. Number 1, develop an actionable alerting strategy. It contains seven subtopics which are First, identify and recommend metrics on which to base alerts. Second, implement alerts using appropriate metrics. Third, implement alerts based on appropriate log messages. Fourth, analyze combinations of metrics. Fifth, implement alerts based on application health checks. Sixth, develop communication mechanism to notify users of degraded systems. Seventh, implement alerts for self-healing activities, for example scaling, failovers. Number two, design a failure prediction strategy. It contains four subtopics which are First, analyze behavior of system with regards to load and failure conditions. Second, calculate when a system will fail under various conditions. Third, measure baseline metrics for system. Fourth, recommend the appropriate tools for a failure prediction strategy. Number three, design and implement a health check. It contains six subtopics which are First, analyze system dependencies to determine which dependency should be included in. Second, health check. Third, calculate healthy response timeouts based on SLO for the service. Fourth, design approach for partial health situations. Fifth, integrate health check with compute environment. Sixth, implement different types of health checks, liveness, startup, shutdown. Domain 3, develop a security and compliance plan. Number 1. Design an authentication and authorization strategy. It contains four subtopics which are First, design an access solution, Azure AD Privileged Identity Management, Azure AD Conditional Access, MFA. Second, organize the team using Azure AD groups. Third, implement service principles and managed identity. Fourth, configure service connections. Number two, design a sensitive information management strategy. It contains four subtopics which are First, evaluate and configure Vault solution, Azure Key Vault, HashiCorp Vault. Second, generate security certificates. Third, design a secret storage and retrieval strategy. Fourth, formulate a plan for deploying secret files as part of a release. Number three, develop security and compliance. It contains four subtopics which are First, Automate dependencies scanning for security, container scanning, OWASP. Second, automate dependencies scanning for compliance, licenses, MIT, GPL. Third, assess and report risks. Fourth, design a source code compliance solution, for example GitHub security, pipeline-based scans, GitHooks, SonarCube. Number four, design governance enforcement mechanisms. It contains four subtopics which are First, implement Azure policies to enforce organizational requirements. Second, implement container scanning, for example static scanning, malware, crypto mining. Third, design and implement Azure Container Registry tasks, e.g. Azure Policy. Fourth, design break the glass strategy for responding to security incidents. Domain 4, manage source control. Number 1. Develop a modern source control strategy. It contains five subtopics which are First, integrate or migrate disparate source control systems, for example GitHub, Azure Repos. Second, design authentication strategies. Third, design approach for managing large binary files, for example Git LFS. Fourth, design approach for cross-repository sharing, for example Git submodules, packages. Fifth, implement workflow hooks number two plan and implement branching strategies for the source code it contains five subtopics which are first 
define pull requests guidelines to enforce work item correlation. Second, implement branch merging restrictions, for example branch policies, branch protections, manual etc. Third, define branch strategy, for example trunk based, feature branch, release branch, GitHub flow. Fourth, design, and implement a PR workflow, code reviews, approvals. Fifth, enforce static code analysis for code quality consistency on PR. Number three, configure repositories. It contains five subtopics which are First, configure permissions in the source control repository Second, organize the repository with git tags Third, plan for handling oversized repositories Fourth, plan for content recovery in all repository states Fifth, purge data from source control Number 4, integrate source control with tools It contains five subtopics which are First, Integrate GitHub with DevOps pipelines. Second, integrate GitHub with identity management solutions, Azure AD. Third, design for GitOps. Fourth, design for chat ops. Fifth, integrate source control artifacts for human consumption, for example Git changelog. Domain 5, facilitate communication and collaboration. Number 1, communicate deployment and release information with business stakeholders. It contains five subtopics which are First, create dashboards combining boards, pipelines, custom dashboards on Azure DevOps Second, design a cost management communication strategy Third, integrate release pipeline with work item tracking, for example Oz DevOps, Jira Fourth, integrate GitHub as repository with Azure boards Fifth, communicate user analytics Number two Generate DevOps process documentation. It contains three subtopics which are First, design onboarding process for new employees. Second, assess and document external dependencies, for example integrations, packages. Third, assess and document artifacts, version, release notes. Number three, automate communication with team members. It contains three subtopics which are First, Integrate monitoring tools with communication platforms, for example Teams, Slack, Dashboards. Second, notify stakeholders about key metrics, alerts, severity using communication platforms, for example email, SMS, Slack, Teams. Third, integrate build and release with communication platforms, for example build fails, release fails. Domain 6, define and implement continuous integration. Number 1. Design Build Automation It contains four subtopics which are First, integrate the build pipeline with external tools, for example, dependency and security scanning, code coverage Second, implement quality gates, for example code coverage, internationalization, peer review Third, design a testing strategy, for example integration, load, fuzz, API, chaos Fourth, integrate multiple tools for example GitHub Actions, Azure Pipeline, Jenkins. Number 2, Design a Package Management Strategy. It contains six subtopics which are First, recommend package management tools, for example GitHub Packages, Azure Artifacts, Azure Automation Runbooks Gallery, Nugent, JFrog, Artifactory. Second, Design an Azure Artifacts implementation including linked feeds. Third, Design versioning strategy for code assets, for example Semver, date-based. Fourth, plan for assessing, and updating and reporting package dependencies, GitHub automated security updates, new keeper, green keeper. Fifth, design a versioning strategy for packages, for example Semver, date-based. Sixth, design a versioning strategy for deployment artifacts. Number three, design an application infrastructure management strategy. It contains two subtopics which are First, assess a configuration management mechanism for application infrastructure Second, define an enforced desired state configuration for environments Number 4, implement a build strategy It contains six subtopics which are First, design and implement build agent infrastructure, include cost, tool selection, licenses, maintainability Second, develop and implement build trigger rules Third, develop build pipelines. Fourth, design build orchestration, products that are composed of multiple builds. 
5th, integrate configuration into build process. 6th, develop complex build scenarios, for example containerized agents, hybrid, GPU. Number 5, maintain build strategy. It contains 6 subtopics which are. 1st, monitor pipeline health, failure rate, duration, flaky tests. 2nd, optimize build, cost, time, performance, reliability. 3rd, analyze C load to determine build agent configuration and capacity. 4th, manage pipeline health. 5th, identify the number of agents and jobs to run in parallel. 6th, investigate test failures. Number 6, design a process for standardizing builds across organization. It contains two subtopics which are first, manage self-hosted build agents, VM templates, containerization, etc. Second, create reusable build subsystems, YAML templates, task groups, variable groups, etc. Domain 7, define and implement continuous delivery and release management strategy. Number 1, develop deployment scripts and templates. It contains six subtopics which are first, recommend a deployment solution, for example GitHub Actions, Azure Pipelines, Jenkins, Circle C, etc. Second, design, and implement infrastructure as code, ARM, Terraform, PowerShell, CLI. Third, develop application deployment process, container, binary, scripts. Fourth, develop database deployment process, migrations, data movement, ETL. Fifth, Integrate configuration management as part of the release process. Sixth, develop complex deployments, IoT, Azure IoT Edge, Mobile, App Center, Drive, Multi-Region, CDN, Sovereign Cloud, Azure Stack, etc. Number two, implement an orchestration automation solution. It contains four subtopics which are First, combine release targets depending on release deliverable, for example, infrastructure, code, assets, etc. Second, design the release pipeline to ensure reliable order of dependency deployments. Third, organize shared release configurations and process YAML templates, variable groups. Fourth, design and implement release gates and approval processes. Number three, plan the deployment environment strategy. It contains five subtopics which are first, design a release strategy, blue slash green, Canary, Ring. Second, implement the release strategy using deployment slots, load balancer configurations, Azure Traffic Manager, Feature Toggle, etc. Third, select the appropriate desired state solution for a deployment environment, PowerShell DSC, Chef, Puppet, etc. Fourth, plan for minimizing downtime during deployments, VIP swap, load balancer, rolling deployments, etc. Fifth, Design a hotfix path plan for responding to high priority code fixes. Exam policy. Microsoft is solely responsible to provide exam policies with a view to enabling the candidates to plan and manage a positive outcome. Microsoft certification exam policies are an appropriate blend of all the exam related details accompanying the before and after exam procedures. These exam policies are the inclusion of certain rules that need to be followed during the exam time or at testing centers. Microsoft Azure Preparation Resources We will be providing the step-by-step -step preparation guide to get the most from your efforts in the AZE 400 exam preparation. First, Microsoft Documentation Microsoft offers Microsoft Documentation that contains different learning pages. By using Microsoft Documentation, you can easily understand Microsoft Azure Experts Solution DevOps Fundamentals. Microsoft Documentation helps you understand different scales of different Azure services in a much detailed manner. Second, Instructor-led training. Microsoft provides you with both online as well as instructor-led training. These instructor-led training courses are basically on-demand classroom sessions that you can easily arrange anywhere and anytime according to your convenience. Third, online forums. The idea to get yourself enrolled in any study group or forum is completely subjective, implying that online forums are not mandatory but an option. Candidates preparing for the AZ400 exam can join any study group and forums to boost their confidence. Online forums are best, as they connect you to all other people who are also going through the same journey as yours. Fourth, books and periodicals. 
Books are your oldest yet the most efficient medium to study from. They help you acquire knowledge in a clear, and detailed manner which helps you understand the basics of the exam topics. The market is flooded with books, and periodicals which you can refer to study for the exam. Fifth, Practice Tests Once you are done with your preparation phase, your performance phase begins. This phase is also referred to, as the self-evaluation phase, as it helps you find out your core strengths, and weak spots. Remember you can only start performing practice tests, when you are done with your whole syllabus. Practice tests are designed in such a manner, that it helps the candidates to encounter the real exam environment around them. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.